Welcome to today's edition of the Exploring Mining Podcast, featuring stock news from TSX, TSXV, CSE, ASX, NASDAQ, and New York Stock Exchange Mining Companies, plus interviews with CEOs and leading experts. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining us again on the Exploring Mining Podcast. Today's interview is with Anil Warich, Executive Vice President and Director of Step Gold. Step Gold is Mongolia's premier precious metals producer and now soon to be the leading gold producer in Mongolia. Anil speaks to us about the background of starting Step Gold and mining in Mongolia. As a producing gold mine in Mongolia that is currently trading under a dollar, this story is well worth a listen for gold investors. Cost efficiency and renewable energy initiatives are two of the standouts we talk about, as well as production results from 2023, Step's recent acquisition making them the largest producer of gold in Mongolia, and what to look out for next in 2024 for gold prices and juniors. Step Gold trades on the TSX under the symbol STGO. To learn more about Step Gold, you can go to their website at www.steppegold.com. This podcast may contain forward-looking statements. Investors are reminded to do their own due diligence and read all disclaimers and disclosures. I hope you all enjoy the show. Welcome to the show, Anil. Always feels great to have a new company on our show. For listeners that are new to the Step Gold story, can you give us a quick history of the company and how you got involved? Yeah, sure. So Step Gold uh, today, actually, we're a gold and silver producer. Uh, We've been in production from our phase one operation, which is an oxide mine, uh, since April 2020. And we're now expanding over the next 18 months into our larger sulfide mine which will bring our production from uh, approximately 30,000 ounces per annum today to over 100,000 ounces. Uh, and that's fully funded. We've raised $150 million U.S. of project financing, all debt to fully fund that expansion, which will come online in Q2 of 2026. And we'll produce that, that run rate of approximately 103,000 ounces per annum at about 950 all-in cost. So we're a producer generating a little bit of cash flow today and then going into a much larger project that's fully funded, fully licensed, and permitted, and construction's already started. In all that, we've also just recently announced an acquisition, also in Mongolia, where we are producing and where our home base is, of another mine called Buru. And that operation actually produces already about 60,000 ounces per annum, and will for the next six to seven years at approximately $1,000 all in cost. So very quickly this year, starting Q3, we jump up from a 30,000 ounce producer not too sexy, I guess, but still real, to about 90,000 ounces of production at $1,000 all in starting Q3 of this year, um, which becomes very relevant and scalable in this market. No different than, I guess, the 150,000 ounce producer that produces at $1,400 all in. So scale is now immediate instead of waiting two years. And then we jump up to about 160,000 ounces of production starting Q2 of 2026. I wanted to talk about Mongolia. I've heard amazing things about the people and the geology there. Can you tell us why you picked uh, Mongolia and just give us some of the information about jurisdiction? I know it's quite a friendly mining area. Yeah, for sure. So I, actually, the one of the questions you asked previously, you know, how I got involved and, and since when. I've been involved since uh, the end of 2016 when we started this company as a private company with, with no assets and, and no money. Um, so I'm a co-founder of the company. I'm on the board. Uh, so I've been involved with raising all the money and negotiating the acquisitions and building out a, uh, the larger team that's now about 350 employees, uh, 99% Mongolian. And uh, how we got involved in Mongolia is uh, because of my uh, business partner, Matt Wood, who's an exploration geologist, uh, was a former executive chairman of Steph Gold until last summer. Uh, our other partner, Bata Tumor Osher, who is now the chairman and CEO, who's a Mongolian national. Bata and Matt have worked together since 2009 in Mongolia when Matt went there looking for precious metals, uh, but it just happened that uh, coal was hot uh, back then. So in 2010, he listed a, a coal company called Hunu Coal. That was a $20 million IPO on the ASX. And in 2011, at the end of 2011, that was sold for half a billion cash to a, a Thai energy company called Bamboo. So that was our first entry and success, I guess, as a team, uh, why we know how to navigate the country uh, and, and have now obviously proven that out with Step Gold, where we've already built the mine and building our second and, I guess, buying the third. So certainly we know the jurisdiction. And more importantly, um, just like Hunu Coal was built, you know, Matt was one of only three expats out of probably 300 
employees at the time when he sold it. Uh, today, Step Gold is uh, really a Mongolian company listed on the TSX. Our chairman and CEO is Mongolian. Our president is Mongolian. Half our board are Mongolian. And 99% of our workforce and country are local. And that's how you should do business in any jurisdiction, not just Mongolia. It, it not only you know buys you that insurance policy and you get to buy in locally, socially, and you know from the government as well, but you can also operate when there's times of pandemics and whatnot. We saw in 2020 when we wanted to start production for the first time ever. So we were able to, to bring production online with a 100% local team. So that's the advantage of also being local. Mongolia as a jurisdiction is uh, a resource-rich country. Uh, what we would say is one of the last frontiers. It's resource-rich, underexplored, and already home to a world-class discovery and mine uh, called Oya Togwe that Rio Tinto now operates, and it was discovered by Robert Freeland in the 2000s. That really put them on the map. So you have a country that's resource-rich, underexplored. Uh, there's probably more Oya Togwe to be discovered, a lot more precious metal deposits of three, five million plus ounces as well. You have a stable government, pro mining, pro foreign investment. You know, parliamentary elections every four years. So it's it's uh you know what what we call the best functional democracy in the former Soviet countries and satellite countries like Mongolia is. So uh, it it really is a, a very interesting place today, where you know you don't see any violence or terrorism that you may see in some other jurisdictions. You've had a stable government that hasn't changed royalty or tax regimes. It uh, doesn't want to be owners of the assets or happy to be passive investors and, and, cl- and clip their royalties and, and taxes, uh, just like just like we have today with 100% ownership of our projects. And uh, a, a lot of room to grow. Um, and so that's, that's, that's the advantage that we have as a company. And we've seen other, other I guess, validation of, of Mongolia with, with Rio Tinto doubling down in country consolidating the ownership of Oye Togoy and buying out Turquoise Hill. You know, that's another eight, nine billion dollar commitment to the country. So that's strong validation. Uh, the French government, Macron was just there in the summer and they signed a two billion dollar uranium agreement. The Indians are there, the, uh, the Japanese, the Koreans, the Germans, and obviously the Canadians. So very destination that you can actually do things properly to Western standards and probably quicker than you can in a lot of our uh, Western jurisdictions today. Well, you just sold me on Mongolia. I imagine most investors would be very pro after that. Let's talk about your flagship property, APO Gold Mine. Last year, Q3, you had, if I have the number correct, uh, your gold production was 23% higher than expected. Can you just give us kind of a quick overview about that property? Yeah, so the ATO property is the our flagship asset today. It's a, it's a, it's a greenfield asset that we purchased from Sentara Gold for 20 million U.S. cash. Uh, so they retained no ownership back in 2017. So we bought it as a private company backed by uh, Elliott Group out of New York and Triple Flag Mining Finance. So some really blue chip investors backed us early on before we went public in 2018. It was about 1.2 million ounces of resources when we purchased it from Sentara Gold, inclusive of 210,000 ounces of reserves. You know, they spent about 30 million U.S. on the project, drilled 67,000 meters, 20,000 meters of trenching, more importantly, they got it fully licensed and permitted for the heat leach that we built and brought online in 2020, but also for our expansion. So for phase one and two, we already bought a permanent project, but we took a phased approach and separated and lowered the risk profile of the company by starting with a low capex uh, heat leach project that generates cash flow, helps build our, our asset base for the sulfides to then bring online at a later time, which we are now doing today. So today, ATO with limited drilling, but just a new geological reinterpretation that Matt put together with our team. Uh, we did some hole, drilled some more holes, extended the deposits, double the size of one, and we're only down to 350, 400 meters today. So they're still growing, but we obviously have enough ounces to bring our expansion online that's over 10 years of mine life, 12 years today, that's over 100,000 ounces, which, which we can then fund or self-fund further growth below these deposits or extensions below the deposits, and of course, across the the property. So today we're sitting at 1.7 million ounces of gold equivalent reserves. So, you know, pretty significant increase um, over the last couple of years and still growing. So that's the project that, you know, continues to give. You know, we do think it could grow to three to five million ounces uh, over time, but now it's over two and we have enough to bring a, a 100,000 ounces of production at over 12 years of mine life online now and continue to grow it. So very exciting project that we've offered 20 million U.S., and have built it in a phased approach to help 
lower the risk profile of the company and the asset. And you also just recently announced very exciting news of your acquisition for Pluro. Can you talk to us about that, which makes you, I guess, the largest gold producer in Mongolia? Yes. Yeah, no, very exciting. Um, listen, in an ideal world, uh, I wish our stock price was higher, uh, but uh, sometimes you just can't wait. Uh, <laughs> it's just, you know, this is the world we're living in, right? And we, we, we as a management team, by the way, you know, own 20% of the company and have never sold a share and we've been public for just under 60 years. So we, we, we feel the pain with our investors and we try to mitigate dilution as much as possible because we're on the same boat. So that's a very important alignment, I guess, with our investors. So this brew transaction uh, requiring a producing mine that's been in production for the last three years. Uh, it was actually a, a former Centera asset as well. And um, it was purchased by a, a separate private group that brought it back online. Uh, at its peak, when Centera was running it, it was producing over 200,000 ounces between the heat leach and the CIL plant. We are buying a heat leach, a CIL plant, and a fleet. And it's been in production for three years. And we see at least today, based on uh, the technical work that we reviewed, uh, at least about six to seven years of mine life remaining at that run rate with potential to extend it. So very exciting because you're buying this asset at approximately two times free cash flow, you know, that's, that's that, or one times revenue, I guess. So that's pretty significant, uh, accretive deal. You know, again, it's, it's diluted because our share price, uh, it's more diluted because our share price isn't higher and not where it should be or where it's been in the past. But at the same time, it, it changes our company today and adds that scale and relevance uh, for investors in the market now instead of waiting two years for our expansion to come online. So important from that uh, that point of view for the scale and the free cash flow that it's going to bring to our company, about 40 million U.S. a year of additional free cash flow starting Q3 of this year on, on, a, on a yearly basis. So that's huge, I, I would say. Uh, it consolidates the, you know, further assets in Mongolia where our team is focused. So shows our focus in our, and, and we're becoming the premier platform for precious metals in country. And, you know, there's obviously the industrial logic when you when you add two producing centers to one executive and one corporate team, right? So there'll be natural synergies uh, just from the integration of, of that operation. And then, of course, you know, it creates leverage. You know, we have two producing mines instead of just one. So the next two years, we have cash flow that could be used uh, to obviously, you know, de-risk the company if things take longer to bring our phase two online and ATO. Uh, maybe Maybe the interest rates could go down. Uh, over the next 12, 18 months that we can refinance our debt package in more favorable terms, given we now have two producing assets. We'll have more cash on the balance sheet. And then, of course, ultimately, we'll have more excess cash flow that, you know, something we can't do today, which we'd love to, given how, how low uh, our valuation is, and, uh, I mean, everyone's are, of course, is, you know, be able to be either buy back shares or return capital. So we could probably expedite those opportunities to close the valuation gap if the market doesn't recover Sooner than later, uh, if we don't get that recovery, so forget the re-rate that, that you know that should happen. We, we need to recover first, and then get the re-rate. And I think this can help expedite all that, and uh, certainly put the company in a in a much better, stronger position coming into what I what I hope and believe will be a better market later this year. And then maybe if it takes longer, we're still well positioned. Definitely, I think it's a standout that you're a producing gold mine under a dollar. I mean, that's <laughs> something I would. <laughs> And since too, if I was an investor, two of the other things that really stand out to me um, for your company is your cost efficiency and then your renewable energy initiative. Can you just quickly talk about those two subjects for investors? Yeah. So from the cost perspective, we're currently producing, I guess, uh, from our oxide mine, which is obviously a lower run rate, about $800, $900 all in cost. So, it's, you know, it's made money since day one. You know, not a lot, but all that's being reinvested into a little bit more exploration, sustaining CapEx and uh, more importantly, servicing the debt that we're drawing down on while we're constructing our phase two. So that's uh, pretty significant on the on the cost side. So we are on the Mongolian steppe. Uh, if you if you look at our videos and, and photos, uh, we're, we're, there's there's nobody around. It's uh, it's it's like being in the plains here in in, in mid Canada here or, or or towards the west of Canada. You get lots of sun and you get lots of wind. And so we did that power study as part of our feasibility, revised feasibility study back in 2021 with the opportunity to try to take advantage of, of the renewable component. It's, uh, it's something that you know, will take a little bit more time, but there, there is a, a path that we can become 100% renewable. So for now, we're diesel gen sets on the phase one operation. We're moving to grid power over the next couple of years for the phase two operation. And during that time, it looks like that we have the right partner 
don't think we've disclosed it, that could finance and build a renewable power solution that allows us to be fully uh, renewable on site and also actually provide power locally. So that's a, that's a, that could be a huge win, uh, uh, certainly for the company. Uh, the opportunity exists. You can store energy now uh, with the wind and solar. So before we were always worried about not being the most reliable source solely and we toggle between. So we'll probably still have the toggle option between grid power and renewable just, just as a, a safeguard. We're certainly that path to renewable is, is uh, you know, a nice way to, 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 to button all this up. Just quickly mentioned about your financing that you had the 150 million. Can you just talk to investors about that briefly, and then your phase two, how that is looking for this year? So the 150 million US uh, we raised was uh, announced last July. We've actually uh, started drawing down on that uh, facility as of November of last year, about 9.6 million, and I think you'll see another draw probably in the next 60 days or so, for you know a much chunkier amount, which really shows you know. Everyone that, that that capital is available to us, and that phase two is proceeding. Uh, but but more importantly, you know this is a, a one and done solution in Mongolia. So the largest commercial bank, uh, TDB Bank, Trade and Development Bank in Mongolia, provided us this 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 whole project financing. You know we did go around the world, talk to all the commercial banks, all the private equity mining groups, and this was the most equity friendly deal. We we were able to raise 150 million of project financing without having to raise the the equity component, which is you know very normal in, in most circumstances, and usually about thirty percent of the of of that capex and of that raise. So, it, it, had we had to raise thirty percent of one hundred fifty million at that time, you know that would be an almost fifty percent dilution. Uh, we were able to just delay that or to avoid that. I mean that's massive, huge, huge upside for our ourselves and equity holders. So it was an equity friendly deal. Three tranches of fifty million US. We're drawing on the first draw uh, now, as I, as I mentioned, at 13.4% interest rate. Uh, the second draw of 50 million when we start drawing will be 12%. These are all fixed numbers. And the third is a gold-linked note that, you know, uh, we have the option to draw or not. And with this new cash flow we're acquiring from an operating mine, who knows if the gold price moves in the next year or two that, you know, generates more cash flow across our operations, you know, we may not even need to use it or we can pay back even further. Equity-friendly deal. Interest-only payments uh, on this package until six months post-commissioning of our phase two. So now we have flexibility again. You know, a lot of a lot of packages you're paying back principal uh, sooner, which means that you have don't have a working capital cushion to you know handle any startup potential issues, which you know could happen in the first one or two quarters. And now we can focus on our operations those those first six months to generate a lot of cash flow, then focusing on paying back. Uh, so that's that's a huge deal as well. So you know, shows you the support we get in country, uh, and, and certainly uh, one of the best packages you can put together uh, that I've seen. Uh, you know, basically, a landmark project financing. So this shows you how our team is dynamic and always working hard to try to mitigate dilution and 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 also focus on operations and that a, that a payback. Oh, it's a fantastic milestone to achieve, especially uh, in markets that were last year. <laughs> You briefly just touched on uh, your management team, and you talked a little bit about, about that in the beginning. But can you just walk us through you know, a little more in track record and history and some of your past success? Yeah, sure. So, so Matt Wood, uh, as I mentioned, who's a co-founder and was a founding executive chairman of Step Gold, you know, exploration geologist, very smart one, and you know, quickly identified that this asset would grow, misunderstood, and obviously non-corporate and Terra. Uh, he's had success, obviously, in Mongolia, as I mentioned earlier, with Gunu Coal being a founder and executive chairman of that company and, and being sold for half a billion cash. He's built companies around the world, including a gold company in Armenia that was sold in 2007 for $130 million. He's done work in West Africa. In Brazil, he was the uh, founding executive chairman and co-founder of Avanco Resources, which was a copper producer sold in 2018 to Oz Minerals, which is now part of BHP. So, you know, he, he's the main guy uh, of, of our team that's technical and has that um, those exits and, and, and wins. And building a company, uh, Bata Tumor Osher, who's worked with him since 2009, uh, who's now our chairman and CEO, is a Mongolian national and has worked on numerous mining and oil and gas companies in Mongolia. Uh, re- really has a good lay of the land and, and obviously very strong relationships uh, with all levels of government and locally knows how to handle, you know, really is the boots on the ground that gets stuff done and, and you know, runs runs the show. So it's not just a, a face sometimes as, as 
people you know call these companies in, in other jurisdictions. So, and then myself, I'm a former banker. I used to work at the Dundee Group of Companies, both at Goodman and Company, and then at Dundee Capital Markets as an investment banker as my last role there. Uh, and then in 2016, I got the opportunity when I was advising Matt on another project in Brazil uh, as a banker to to join forces and, and start this this journey. Yeah, a very exciting one, and 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 uh, has been been amazing. Uh, on that on that basis, and then uh, our CFO Jeremy Self, he's a uh, former head of Deloitte's global mining practice. He actually set up, I believe, Deloitte's uh, operations in Mongolia like 13, 14 years ago. Worked out of Asia for four years, so he's got that global experience and experience, and of course in Mongolia. And then on our board we have uh, a gentleman like Patrick Michaels out of Zurich. Uh, him and his father uh, used to run a precious metals fund, and then they run. Uh, a multi-family office, basically, um, and you know, one of our first investors as well. So that's uh, you know good good distribution there. We also have Steve Haggerty, who used to be a former Bear of Gold heat bleach expert, world renowned cold weather heat bleach expert. Uh, so sure we have you know someone else technical that adds value to our team uh, and our board. It's great. And then you know there's, the list goes on about the five other board members. If you want me to get into, I can. But uh, obviously uh, a bunch of local members that are, that are very strong. Former environmental minister uh, in Mongolia, who's also on the UN climate change panel. Uh, we have a geologist uh, who's also a, a teacher at the Mongolian Institute. So we, we've got a good diverse board with varied experience that uh, adds a lot of value. Can you talk to us um, as the acquisition moves ahead? What what's going to be your stock structure? And just kind of give investors a little bit of what's going on for this year. Sure, sure. So once we close the transaction, and uh, I call it end of Q2, so end of June this year, um, we'll have about 250 million shares outstanding. Uh, at that point, almost 5 million ounces on the balance sheet, uh, two producing assets, and a third obviously coming online in 2026 that's fully funded. So uh, cash flow profile uh, for the company on 250 million shares will be about, uh, uh, about 50-ish U.S. at the current um, gold price for the next call it two years and then we'll jump up to probably 80 90 million US free cash flow you know from these these operations and our plan is obviously to have more uh, mines in Mongolia uh, we're, we're going to advance our exploration projects maybe acquire some more development and whatnot a fairly tight uh, structure I would say as a producer even today with 104.5 before the before the acquisition you know pretty lean I would say so in you know our market cap today before the acquisition is Barely scratching 65 Canadian, uh, embarrassingly, but again, that, that's just the market, and uh, we we clean up very well when 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 people care. And so cap structure will be pretty pretty tight at that point. I think you know there will be no 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 further uh, large equity raises. However, we are, and we've already announced this that we we do plan, and, and we've already been working on it for actually a couple of years now, is a dual listing in Hong Kong. Uh, and the reason is we are an Asian producer, so where we are well understood. Uh, today on the TSX, which we obviously will remain on the main board of the TSX, we're one of hundreds of producers and one of thousands of mining companies. So in, in Hong Kong, uh, as an Asian producer today, we'll be one of seven listed companies. Four of them or so are, are producers with market caps of $2.3 billion to $50 billion. So even at 250 million shares, and I'm just going to use a number here, Canadian, at $2 a share, that's 500 Canadian and 400 U.S. Will be dirt cheap compared to our other comps. Obviously, that's a market cap comparison, but a lot of room to grow, more liquidity, well understood. I think that'll be another catalyst for the company, and so that's that's what our cap structure will kind of be around, I would say, and, and, and maintain around that. And you know, we'll have a lot of cash uh, in the future to to solve things. If the market's still weak, then we can buy back shares, or in a few years, let's call it, you know, at least two three years, we can be a dividend payer, or we can do both. Uh, so a lot of flexibility, a lot of opportunity to create liquidity events for ourselves and investors that doesn't rely on just a trade sale. Uh, it's a very exciting story. Everything I hear, I love about your company. I know we don't have a magic eight ball today, but uh, it's, it's a good day for gold. Uh, we're coming up to PDAC. What is your speculation for the gold market? What do you think we're going to see for March? And uh, do you think that this will translate or hope? It will translate into some of the junior space. It always does eventually, but unfortunately, it always starts at the top. Uh, at the top, you have the Newmont and the Nikos, and I think Newmont today is probably 
still hovering around. Well, it's forty three dollars today. Okay, so they're doing a bit better. They were at forty dollars a couple days ago. You know, last time gold was at this price and holding up, they were they were over hundred. You know, close to hundred dollars. <laughs> this is the biggest gold company in the world, by the way, right? Uh, so it always starts at the top, given that they have more cash flow, longer life mines, a bigger a bigger asset base. But it does trickle down, and, and I always use the example of 2020. Every asset class, including gold and all the equities, sold off at the beginning, the first quarter. And then as gold came and recovered first, then the equities did very quickly. We were a 90 cent stock when we started production in 2020, and we were $3. And we had a market cap that was whew, almost four times our current market cap back then in August 2020, with only producing for three months ever, only having just over a million ounces on our balance sheet. And today we have more than that. We have eight times more reserves. We've produced successfully for uh, producing over 100,000 ounces. We've de risked our expansion and raised that money. So we have ourselves, uh, being selfish here, but we ourselves have opportunity to certainly re-rate and recover uh, at multiples of where we're trading today without having to raise money to get there. And I think it's going to trickle down the juniors, uh, producers. So it's going to go with the majors, mid-tiers, juniors. And uh, when it happens, it happens quickly. And it happens, and it's and big, right? And I think as you see one or two interest rate cuts, whenever that happens, I'll, I'm just being conservative second half of this year. You're going to see more money that's sitting on the sidelines collecting coupons because there's no urgency to run in the, jump in the market, jump in, and all of a sudden producers like us, people see the screens and the profitability and the multiples. You're going to see some of these guys trade at, you know, majors go up 2 to 3x, majors, right? The guys are 30, 40, 50 billion dollar companies go up two, three X and you can see some of the mid tiers and juniors go up anywhere from three to 10 X. That's, that's how I see it playing out. And then you can see it trickle down to expiration where people start funding them again. I love that answer. Anil, <laughs> 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 uh, this has been fantastic. Uh, can you give investors uh, where they can reach out to you? I know you're going to be at PDEC. Where are there any other conferences that you're coming up to or anything else that they can follow you? <sighs> Yeah, certainly. I mean, I mean, we're very active on social media, on our distribution list. Uh, go, go to our website at www.stepegold.com. Uh, you can certainly sign, sign up there. Um, you know, my our, our contacts are there, so you, any investor can reach out to me directly, and I'm happy to have a, a call. We will be at PDAC. We have events uh, starting Sunday, including a Mongolia Day event on, on Sunday uh, with multiple companies and in the ministry will present, and then uh, events after. So we're here at PDAC for the next week. I can't think offhand when our next uh, conference after that is. Uh, we've been very selective as well, given the market. Uh, there's no point going to everything, so we didn't participate uh, in anything in the last kind of month or so. Early in the year, we were in Saudi at the Future Minerals Forum, but um, you know we'll, we'll find the next venue uh, certainly. But we are very active online uh, through our distribution list and very accessible. So any investor uh, who listens to this and wants to get hold of me or anyone else in the company. Please reach out. All of our all contacts are there, and we're happy to arrange calls. And obviously, I don't say we're cheap. Everyone is, uh, but certainly those who have production, production growth, and cash flow growth, and still all the experts in sizzle and upside that any Sporco have, uh, we we kind of have a full package here with a lot of room to grow. And a majority of our investors, including Eric Broad and Fidelity and ourselves, and Elliot, have all come in at higher prices and are all very supportive, as you can see. So great opportunity for new investors to get in. Unfortunately, cheaper than some of the, the most sophisticated investors in the world. How long that'll last, I can't say. But uh, again, that, that 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 is the opportunity. Oh, it's it's great. I love it. Uh, I'm sold on the deal. So, <laughs> <laughs> so much. <am I. laughs> well, thank you so much, Anil. This was great. Well, that does it for today's Exploring Mining podcast. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor for this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. InvestorIdeas.com reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. All investment involves risk, and this podcast is not meant to be an endorsement to buy or sell securities or products. To hear more podcasts, you can go to InvestorIdeas.com slash audio. And a reminder, you can also hear our podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, iHeart.com, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spreaker, and SoundCloud. 